Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I will recap one of a drama thriller films from 2015, titled High Rise. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film begins by showing several buildings that stand firmly next to one another. One of these buildings can be occupied and has also been converted into a livable apartment. On the same day, a new resident begins to move into the apartment, and his name is Lying. Lying is a doctor who works in the field of physiology, and now he has been assigned a residence on the 25th floor. In fact, the building itself has 40 floors in total, and all the floors are fully occupied by residents. When Lying moves into his new house, the first thing he does on his first day is sunbathe. At this moment, he realizes that right above his apartment, there is an apartment belongs to a woman named Charlotte. Charlotte is a single mother who only lives alone with her son in her apartment, without the presence of father. There is a man standing next to her, his name is Wilder and he lives on the bottom floor of the building. Lying is then told by Charlotte that there are several special facilities for residents on the 20th floor and above, including a gym, spa, swimming pool, supermarket, and a primary school, all of which are located on the 30th floor. Lying ends up spending the rest of his day enjoying the aforementioned amenities, and he seems reluctant to start his next day, which would inevitably require him to get back to work like everyone else. On the next day, when Lying is about to leave for work, he first goes to dispose of his trash down the chute. But it's really annoying for him as he finds out that the apartment prohibits its tenants from disposing large-sized garbage bags. Even so, he disregards the warning and dumps his garbage bag anyways, making one of the janitors, Robert, reprimand him for it. Robert says that Lying had just plugged the garbage chute, and this would become an issue for the rest of the tenants. Later on, Lying now arrives at the physiology school, where he teaches several students how to perform surgery on the human face. But in the middle of the class, one of the students, Monroe, passes out because he cannot handle the sight before him. Monroe. Later in the day, Lying attends a party hosted by Charlotte, and it is at this party that Lying meets Helen, alias Wilder's wife who is expecting a child. To his surprise, Helen seems fine with how Wilder continuously flirts with Charlotte. Well, in the end Charlotte rejects his advances and is more interested in Lying who is far younger. Just from this moment we are given the gist of how unusual the tenants of this building are. Moreover, Helen and Charlotte carefreely invite Lying to swim with them. Just as Lying is about to take up the invitation, a man named Simmons comes up to him. The man then asks Lying to come with him because someone apparently wants to see Lying. So he has no choice but to comply with Simmons' request, and follow him to the top floor. The elevator used this time is a private one, signifying that Lying is going to meet with someone important. Well, who would have thought that an immensely vast penthouse would exist on the top floor? It is so huge that he has to walk pretty far before he encounters a man named Royal. On this encounter, Lying is informed that he is in the audience of none other than the architect, who designs this very apartment building. Using his fantasy and imagination, Royal still has four more buildings to finish, and when all of them are finished, the whole complex would resemble the shape of a human palm. In other words, all five buildings would represent five fingers, and a huge lake will be built in the middle. Royal then informs Lying that he has a wife named Anne. Plus, he says that Anne was an uneducated beggar whose life changed, because Royal lusted over her and married her. After further inquiries, it turns out that Lying is not the only tenant who has met Royal. Royal says that only residents of floor 25 and above are allowed to see what he looks like. Tenants who have met him are also given the opportunity to attend one dinner party he hosts for special guests. In the evening, Lying makes time to hook up with Charlotte. But they are interrupted by Toby, Charlotte's son who suddenly comes running for his mother. Toby has a nanny called Laura, and so far we know that Laura is a tenant from one of the bottom floors who Charlotte hired. Days go by, and we see Lying try to match a color for his bedroom wall to the sky. Lying then goes to the supermarket on the 30th floor to purchase a few things. Not long after, he accidentally comes across a celebrity called Jane. The woman asks Lying if he wants her autograph, but Lying not recognizing her, disregards the offer and goes straight for the cashier. Meanwhile, the special guests are starting to arrive in the building to attend Royal's party. Due to the immense amount of electrical use in the high-rise, the building's maintenance no longer pays mind to the tenants of the lower floors, who are starting to lose power. 
Unfortunately for Laing, the party is 18th century themed, causing the guests to make fun of him for not wearing the right attire. To his surprise, Laing recognizes one of the people who makes fun of him. It turns out that the person is Monroe, one of his students who passed out during his class, and he lives in floor 39. Simmons prohibits the use of cheap items such as the cigarettes, and drinks Lying purchased at the supermarket. As a result, Lying is then told to leave the party as soon as possible, and is forced to take a broken elevator. The days go by, and the residents of the lower floors are now protesting to Robert due to a 20-hour power outage. The protest is led by Wilder, who has a wife and two children. They can no longer take how the building's maintenance keeps neglecting their issues. We return to Lying who has just arrived at work. At this point, he is given a brain scan of Monroe, who previously passed out. Lying is informed that he is fine, but he still crossed with Monroe, and deliberately lies to him by saying that Monroe has a brain tumor. Long story short, time passes by quickly and we see Lying back in his apartment. Wilder is now hosting a small party in his apartment where he invites small children, one of them being Toby. During this time, Wilder, who at this point is beyond sick of the tenants of the upper floors, decides to take the kids to the swimming pool on the 30th floor. Well, even though Wilder has no actual right of such amenity, he still insists on getting in. To add, a party hosted by one of the residents of the upper floors is currently taking place at the swimming pool. The social disparity only further motivates Wilder to crash the party. With no regards for what is at stake, Wilder proceeds to wreak havoc with the kids he takes. He also kills a dog he comes across in the pool to express the hatred he has harbored for so long. Now, things have escalated after the electrical power supply in the apartment, has proven to be utterly insufficient. In this situation, Royal's presence is desperately needed, but Royal is nowhere to be seen, and all the tenants are now at odds with one another. After the chaos at the swimming pool, tenants of the lower floors are now celebrating their success by throwing another party. In this party, Wilder attempts to seduce Simmons' wife, which ends with Simmons getting beat up by Wilder. Show the lady what you made of. Hmm? Oh. Oh. Ah, sorry, Jim. Ah. Wilder, stop it. Even more shocking, as this party takes places, Monroe decides to take his own life by jumping off the 39th floor. It is clear that his action reflected his desperation upon receiving the news that he had a brain tumor. Lying is now covered in guilt, since he had not anticipated Monroe making that poor choice. After the party the night before, the tenants of the lower floors are still lying around in exhaustion while Lying is up and about, working out. Unbeknownst to a lot of people, Royal is so caught up in his own project, that he has been ignoring all the information given by Simmons. Due to his ignorance and immense focus on reaching his own goals, the situation at the apartment only gets worse. The food supply is no longer taken care of, neither is the water supply, cleanliness is no longer paid attention to, and the tension between the tenants is at an all-time high. It is at this point that Wilder becomes suspicious of how no police officer has arrived to investigate about the suicide man, so he intends to expose the injustices within the high-rise himself. How can the police not investigate, nor does an ambulance come to pick up his body? The scene then shifts to Simmons and several upper-floor tenants, plotting something. They've been complaining about the chaos and the fact that their food has ran out, ever since the incident that Wilder caused that night. At this point, they are still adamant on maintaining the hierarchy system in the building, and instead plan to go to the building's supermarket to get some food. Now, the tenants have been divided into several groups, each of which will fight to survive the chaos. To achieve their own interests, they no longer pay mind to their daily occupations, and instead decide to focus solely on this conflict. Royal's men then go down and accuse Wilder for instigating the chaos, before beating him. Lying, on the other hand, has a fight with a man over a can of paint, which ends with the man lying weak on the floor, and lying successfully taking home the can of paint. After the chaos at the supermarket dies down, Simmons decides to dump the unconscious Wilder among piles of trash. Meanwhile, Lying now busies himself with painting his bedroom walls and plans to isolate himself for a few days. Not long after, the pregnant Helen comes by his apartment, the two end up in a steamy embrace. This shows how broken the social order has become, and how the lack of enforced norms nor laws may cause mankind to start acting like animals. Same goes with Jane, who deliberately offers herself to the tenants of the upper floors. Wilder, on the other hand, finally regains his consciousness, 
where he unknowingly comes across Royal, the owner of the building. This is because Royal has never shown his face to tenants below the 25th floor. Ergo, Royal casually steps down to the bottom floor to bribe the police, to keep their mouths shut about all the incidents happening in the high-rise. Not only that, upon returning to the upper floor, Royal accidentally happens upon Anne, his wife, getting harassed by upper floor dwellers. On the other side of the story, Wilder decides to visit the room of one of Royal's servants. He intends to seek some information on the whereabouts of the owner of the building, which ends up with the revelation that Charlotte's son, Toby, is actually Royal's illegitimate child. Lying and Helen, postcoital, are visited by a man called Steele. Steele is attracted to see Helen's presence, and says that men are bartering their wife for food in another floor. Lying then flatly refuses his request by saying that he is not hungry. As time goes, the situation in the apartment keeps getting worse. My name is Richard Wilde. Wilder begins to threaten Charlotte with the information he knows about her and Royal son. He then drags Charlotte into a bedroom in order to fulfill his desire. Days go by, the tenants of the upper floors are running out of ideas on how to overcome their hunger. They reach the point of slaughtering Anne's horse, with her consent. Even under such dire conditions, they still opt to stay in the apartment, testament to their immense greed. They instead choose to sacrifice another creature, much like how the tenants of the lower floors no longer care about each other's well-being. They begin to attack the man who was having sex with their friend's wife during the chaos. No amenity means anything anymore when one is deprived of everything. The one party who everyone is supposed to count on merely spends his days, sleeping without a care in the world about his tenants who have paid for their rights to stay. Later in the day, Helen gives birth with the help of several individuals, who still have their heads together. Meanwhile, her husband is still with his plan and seeking for Royal's whereabouts. As it turns out, Lying is invited to a dinner by Royal, accompanied by Charlotte. As we know, the delicious dish served for both of them that night is made out of Anne's horse. At this point, Royal surmises to Lying that the failure of the high-rise may actually be a kind of success, a crucible for change that could lead residents to escape to a new life. After the dinner, Wilder manages to sneak into the top floor. He then spots Royal in the garden, and demands that he confess to orchestrating the chaos and inequality. Wilder accuses him of hiding behind women and children, before shooting him with the gun. However, Wilder is not seen as a hero by the women, and ends up getting killed by them, while Toby watches everything through his kaleidoscope. Now that Royal is dead, the social order is no longer divided as it was before, since Royal's followers have also been killed by the rest of the residents left alive. Meanwhile, Anne and the other women are happy to care for Helen's baby. From that day on, Lying plans to build a brand new way of living in the next high-rise, that would definitely be better than what came before. But it is all just a fantasy, for Lying appears to have gone insane, speaking in the third person and talking to the building. After cooking what is left to eat, he lies down with Charlotte, reflecting that what has happened will eventually occur in the second tower of the development. The film concludes with Toby listening to a radio broadcast of Margaret Thatcher, declaring that wherever there is state capitalism, there can never be political freedom. Okay guys, that's all the recap for High Rise 2015. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.